Whoa. Did you see that? It just flew right over my head. It's huge. Every time it flaps, <laughs> you can just hear the wind, the noise. Okay, we got one cornered. To encounter a California condor soaring wild today, hear the rush of wind as it effortlessly glides by, follow the shadow it casts on the landscape with its nine-foot wingspan, and be reminded that at one point not too long ago, a sight like this would have been impossible, for the California condor almost crossed an irreversible threshold that all species dread. Extinction. To learn about the plight of the largest flying land bird in North America, we're heading to the state of California, the namesake of the species. Our adventure starts in the bustling city of Los Angeles. This landscape is vastly different than what the condors used to see when they used to fly in this habitat. This was their former range. Now, it is what you see in front of us. It is a city of four million people. And of course, people, skyscrapers, Urban sprawl does not mix with a prehistoric bird like the California condor. As we navigate the traffic and congestion of the city, it's hard to imagine how vastly different this landscape once was. If we go back in geological time to the late Pleistocene, the cars would be replaced with herds of mammoths that were stalked by saber-toothed tigers and short-faced bears. And looking down on this scene would have been the California condor. In order for the condor to thrive today, it requires vast open expanses, nesting cliff faces, and of course food in the form of large carcasses. As time has passed, the resources in this area have decreased due to high demand for agricultural and land development, which ultimately led to the steep population declines of these prehistoric birds. We are on our way to meet up with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist Molly Astell, who is working at the Bitter Creek National Wildlife Refuge on the California Condor Program. We're going to be helping Molly and her team work up some of these condors that they actually have in flight pens. The program that we're going to be working with today is responsible for saving the species. So what does the term workup mean? I will help catch a number of different condors, assist in pulling biometric data, and lastly, we will do an overall health assessment before the birds are released back into the wild. And we have arrived at the Bitter Creek National Wildlife Refuge. After meeting Molly, I immediately noticed a large flight pen, and that is when I spotted my first condor. This is officially the moment where I've seen my first California condor. The flight pen is a structure that biologists use to safely trap birds and temporarily house them while doing important checkups. With several birds in the flight pen needing to be worked up and released, Molly had to give me a crash course in the proper handling technique of condors. And then I was ready to enter the flight pen. We immediately became engulfed in a frenzy of condors as they flew over us, swiftly <laughs> avoiding capture. It's a huge bird every time it flaps. You can just hear the wind, the noise, picks up the dirt. Whoa! Did you see that? It just flew right over my head. It's huge. You got to keep your head on a swivel. They're <laughs> just flying everywhere. It might look chaotic, but the team paid close attention to the birds and worked fast and efficiently to reduce any stress. Okay, we got one cornered. They're huge. Molly quickly netted the first bird and then got it ready for me to hold. Oh. And the condor is free of the net. So we'll go over to the chair and I'll hand this guy over to you. All right, so next step is I'm actually going to be holding this condor as we actually do the workups. I'm taking off this GoPro. All right, so like this. Yep. There we go. There we go. Feels solid. <laughs> I'm holding a California condor. It is a solid bird. Right now, my left hand is holding the head secure. What's very noticeable on this condor is that large number tag that's on the wings, and that's very distinct in order for the biologist to get a quick look and know exactly what condor they are looking at. 
With a bird in hand, it was time to collect the biometrics. It appears healthy, which means it's ready to be released back into the wild. All right, here we go. The condor was considered functionally extinct in the wild when biologists captured the last remaining bird in 1987 to bring into captivity for an intensive breeding program. The world population at the time was only 22 California condors. Today, thanks to the management efforts, the total number is rising, with close to 500 condors in existence. However, the species still faces several challenges and remains critically endangered. One down and several more condors to go. So we're gonna put this GoPro back on and we're gonna go ahead and get our next uh, vulture for the workup. Each time a condor was worked up, it allowed us the opportunity to get a closer look at the amazing features of these prehistoric birds. So I'm looking at the feet of the condor, you'll notice that the talons are not super sharp. This is not a bird that actually has to grip prey items. Uh, so actually they're used more for walking and stabilizing the bird. If you guys can see the tongue, can you see those barbs on it at all? Yeah, you can. So it kind of like grabs the meat with that and then it pulls its tongue in, kind of like ratcheting that meat in. So chomp it's and really just kind of cool. gripping that yeah. flesh, rotting flesh and just swallowing it down. Oh, wow. So birds have what's called a crop and that's an area where they could actually kind of store food as they're just like gorging themselves so that'll actually fill up with food. Each bird is fitted with both GPS and VHF transmitters. Now the transmitters over the years I'm sure they've become more advanced. Pretty much every bird with this has their own cell phone number. <laughs> During the workup process each bird receives a full health assessment and an assortment of biometrics are taken. Three, two, one. Everything looks good. Got nice tail feathers. Got nice tail feathers. Our ladies are going to be looking at your tail feathers. Don't lose them. I lose my tail feathers sometimes. Actually, I lost all my head feathers. <laughs> That's why I wear a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I would say the easy part is holding the bird. Now I'm going to participate in taking blood from the bird. I'm going to poke this bird. I apologize if it gets angry, uh, but there is a process. We're gonna, of course, take a blood sample because this is the most important part of this workup is getting that blood sample to determine if there are any high or elevated levels of lead. High levels would indicate the bird is ingesting lead contaminants from the environment. One of the most common ways of ingestion is from the presence of spent ammunition fragments found in the carcasses left behind by hunters. The birds utilize this easy food source and over time, develop lead poisoning, which can have deadly results. All right. Thank you, sir. With several birds successfully released, Molly assigned me a final task. Net one of the last birds on the list, an adult male that was known to be a bit feisty. If you think I'm ready, I'm going to give it a shot. I think you're up for it. All right. Let's go in there and get the last bird. It's an adult. It's an adult. All right. I think I'm ready. 740 is the last one for us to capture. He knows what's up, he keeps going up, avoiding Dave. You ready, Mario? You got him! Okay. All right, we got 740. We got the bird in the net. Then we gotta get the bird out of the net. Yeah, and you can start by getting that tail out. Cool, that's a great start. I'm gonna go underneath the net there and take over on the beak. How's that? That looks awesome. And you're gonna go underneath. over that leg, perfect, and then grab that other drumstick. Okay. And you got the bird. You got the bird. Oh boy. Nice. Okay. So there you have it. Number 740, we finally got him. The last bird we needed to work up, and it's an adult. The way we know it's an adult is look at that head, look at that striking coloration, and of course that bald head. The juveniles have some feathers on the head, but as they mature, they lose all the feathers, and they get this nice pinkish orange coloration to them, which is the classic California condor look. And the eye is red. 
and around the eye, you've got that beautiful yellowish hue to the skin. Very striking coloration. It's definitely distinct looking into the eyes of a California condor. All right, Molly. Cool. Let's get going with the processing, right? Sounds good, yeah. Okay. After completing the workup and determining that this bird was healthy, the next step was to release this big male back into the wild. As I prepare for the release, I could feel an incredible anticipation, both in myself and in the bird. The condor tensed up and began to flex its wings, ready to take off. And as I let go, a few large flaps launched it up into the air. I watched in amazement as the enormous bird seemed to effortlessly glide off into the distance, a sight that we can never lose again. Every species has its purpose in the world and is tightly bound to an intricate flow of energy that if disrupted by human actions can quickly spiral into the extinction of a species. California condors are new world vultures and play a vital role in the ecosystem as nature's cleanup crew, consuming carcasses that can harbor bacteria and disease. As a biologist, I am inspired by the tireless dedication that Molly and her team have given to protecting the California condor. And I feel it's a responsibility we all share as stewards of our planet. If you want to learn more or get involved with condor conservation, click on the links in the video description below to ensure that this prehistoric bird continues to soar into the future. If you thought these birds were incredible and huge, check out an even bigger bird, the cassowary, and some of our other favorite feathered friends. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next adventure.